Hi everybody, I'm Father Joseph Mary. I'm gonna welcome you back to the series that we're doing on prayer. We're here at Annunciation Catholic Church in the choir loft. It's one of the most beautiful churches in Denver. It was built in the 1890s by immigrants and today is predominantly made up of Hispanic immigrants. And it's a beautiful place to just come to pray, especially when no one's here and to be alone with God. Last week we started talking about what is prayer? And we said that prayer is ultimately our heart's desire to be in the presence of God. But more than that, prayer is also God's desire to be with us. And so maybe you were convinced by that. You said, okay, this prayer sounds like a good thing. I just want to get started. So you go in your room and you close the door. Maybe you light a candle, dim the lights, and you say, hello, God. You hear the crickets chirping outside the window. What am I doing? Nothing's happening. It's not working. So prayer can be daunting in the beginning. It can be hard just to start. The church distinguishes between vocal prayer, meditative prayer, and contemplative prayer. And we have to start at the beginning. You know, Michael Phelps was uh, probably the, the greatest Olympic swimmer of all time. He won more gold medals than anyone. He could fly through the pool like a dolphin. But at some point in his life, Michael Phelps had to dip his toe in the pool and convince himself he wasn't going to drown and jump in. He had to start at the beginning. And when we're learning to pray and to be in relationship with God, we have to start at the beginning too. And that means we have to start just by talking to God. And so when you want to pray, practical tips, make yourself comfortable. Because we pray with our body just as much as we pray with our soul. Right? We're, we're human beings, right? we're embodied souls. So if it helps you to pray, kneel. If it helps you to pray, sit. If it helps you to fold your hands, fold your hands. If it helps you to extend your hands, extend your hands. Whatever gives you that lifting of the heart feeling to God, because that's what prayer is at its most basic. And then pray to the Holy Spirit. Always begin your prayer by praying to the Holy Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit to come. Because Jesus tells us the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us to pray, who groans inside of us with rumblings too deep for understanding. And so always begin by asking the Holy Spirit to come. In your own words, or you can use prayers of the church, the Veni Creator Spiritus, right? And so begin with asking the Holy Spirit to come, and then talk to God. When I say talk to God, I mean, don't say, oh, God, everything's wonderful. Thank you for my life. Thank you for everything. I'm so happy. Maybe that's true for you, but that's not true for most of us. Right? Most of us are some days where we're, we're happy and we're going through good things. Most of us have days where we're struggling or we feel down. Some days we just feel like we're overwhelmed by life. The point is be honest with God. St. Teresa of Avila was very honest with God. One time she was uh, traveling from one monastery to another and she was going through a river and her donkey kicked her off. She fell in the water and her habit and everything. She stood up and she said, if this is how you treat your friends, God. It's no wonder you don't have very many. The saints were honest with God. And so when we pray, we want to be honest with God. God, this is what's going on in my life today. I'm struggling so much with this. I'm really finding it hard to love this person. I'm really finding it hard to forgive this person. And thank God. Thank God for the good things in your life, the beautiful things, your family. Thank God for the little things, the things that we take for granted, the sunlight, the softness of your pillow, the, the coolness of the breeze. All those things all around us are reminders of God's love for us. And so thank God too for the little things. But after a while, you're gonna to have to stop talking. Because prayer is a conversation, right? It's us talking to God, but it's also us listening to God, opening our hearts to what he wants to say to us. And so begin to take time in your prayer for silence. Maybe even set a watch, five or 10 minutes, I'm just gonna be silent. And as soon as you do that, you'll notice a thousand trifling thoughts running through your head distractions. Oh, what am I going to do next? I gotta, what am I going to make for dinner tonight? Oh, I got to pick so-and-so up from school. All these distractions. St. John of the Cross says they're just logs floating in a river. The temptation is to pick them up and want to examine them. He says, don't do that. Let them float by. Just keep going back to silence. Silence. Sometimes it helps to have an image or a word that we use, like Jesus or Mary or some image that we use, just to keep ourselves in that, that place of listening and of silence and attentiveness to God. The most important thing about starting to pray is to persevere. Because like I said, in the beginning, it can be difficult to get started. And our temptation is going to be to want to say this isn't worth it and just to quit. 
persevere. The more you spend time in that relationship with Jesus, the more his peace and his joy and his love and his light are going to fill your heart. It's going to change your life. So start today. Just begin. Don't be discouraged. As John Paul II always said, do not be afraid. Dulcan altum. Put out into the deep. Take a risk. God's waiting for you. So thank you for watching today. We're going to continue this series next week, and we're going to be talking about how to pray through Advent. So we hope you'll join us. Please be sure to like and uh, subscribe.